Thanks so much, Anderson. Joining us now is a key Michigan Democrat who has been, let's put it kindly, raising the alarm, sounding, sounding a warning, shooting a warning shot about the challenges President Biden faces in her home state of Michigan. Congresswoman uh, Debbie Dingell. Uh, Congresswoman, I remember you issuing such warnings in 2015, 2016. Not sure you were heated, uh, but uh, are Democrats in the White House in Washington, D.C. listening to you now? I think I would answer it this way. In 2015 and 2016, nobody believed me, including most of the people in the media, until it happened. Michigan's a purple state. It's always a purple state. I'm not old, but I'm seasoned, and I've been through many elections. This is going to be a tough election year. This election could come down to the state of Michigan. I think it will. It's going to be a purple state until election day. And it's not just one demographic. You've been talking about a number of them that we've got to make sure get to the polls on election day. So for the record, I believe I believed you in 2015, 2016. Let's talk about what's going on in your state right now, uh, because, as you know, there is an organized group, uh, uh, many of them progressives, Arab Americans, Muslim Americans, uh, saying that in order to protest uh, President Biden's support for Israel in the war uh, that that country is waging against Hamas in Gaza, which has left a, a, a horrific uh, death toll uh, in its wake, um, they should, voters should, Democrats should vote uncommitted. Uh, previously, we know that there are about 20,000 Democrats who vote uncommitted no matter what. Uh, right now, the number is approaching 25,000. And what is it? You have but tw with about 16% of the vote in. So it's going to be a, a sizable uncommitted vote. Um, is this a surprise to you in any way? And what do you make of this potential impact Will the White House change course in any way? So, first of all, it's not a surprise to me. Uh, I've been telling people that. Uh, we have a campaign called Listen to Michigan with people that want to be listened to. But, you know, as everybody started acting surprised tonight or were looking at figures, I said to multiple people over the course of the last month, Ann Ar my district, Washtenaw County, which has got Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti, and everybody really ignores me when I say Ypsilanti, too. I bet have more committed votes than Dearborn. And as you're watching, I'm going to be right. And I expected it because it's not just the Arab American Muslim community. It's young people who, are, you know, want to be heard, are concerned, have the same concerns about they know what Hamas did was a terrorist act, but they are watching innocent civilians be killed in that kind of damage that's it, that's there. We've got to talk about that issue, but we've got to talk about a lot of other issues too. Women's issues are going to be critical. The environment is going to be absolutely critical. The border is important to different parts of my district, like downriver. We have to talk about all those issues, and we've got to turn out voters uh, in November. And the discussion about union workers was very accurate a few minutes ago as well. So... It's, it's my impression that the reason um, that Listen to Michigan, this group that is urging uh, the protest vote uh, today, uh, what one of the things they're doing is they're saying, pay attention to us, President Biden. Uh, we're not costing you anything right now, uh, other than maybe some uh, uncomfortable conversations. But Donald Trump uh, beat Hillary Clinton by roughly 10,000 votes in 2016. Joe Biden beat Donald Trump by roughly 154,000 votes uh, in 2020. If you don't listen to us, maybe, maybe we will vote a uh, third party. It, 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 do you think that President Biden is hearing that message? And if so, what will that mean? Uh, what will that mean in terms of foreign policy? What will it mean in terms of outreach? Because as you know, President Biden himself has not gone to talk to the Arab American and Muslim American community in Dearborn, although he has sent aides to do so. So, look, I think that you, people want to be listened to and that this is not a monolithic community. No community is monolithic. There are some people that will vote for Donald Trump. I don't think it's a majority of this community. I think a lot of people may stay home and a lot of people are going to know what the choice is and that the choice is going to help them make their decision that they don't want to see somebody who's called them poison or vermin or wants to ban them from this country elected either. But right now, people are hurting. 
uh, I think that people are too raw. You've seen that people have been not even wanted to meet with some the national security team or Samantha Powers. We the president's working towards a temporary ceasefire. He says I've called for a ceasefire. Uh, we've watched too many innocent people uh, die there. Gaza is in terrible shape. But I think he does need to sit down with his community uh, when feelings are not quite so raw. But he's also got to do, it's not just this community. This community is important in Michigan, but we've got to turn out our vote. Women's voices are going to be very important. Women were energized two years ago. We got to make sure they stay energized. This vote, who wins Michigan, is going to come down to who votes. And this is going to be about getting out the vote. Um, last question. Your, col your colleague, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, uh, voted uncommitted in this primary her sister is, in fact, run, uh, running the uh, Listen to Michigan uh, campaign, I believe. You have said that you told Congresswoman Tlaib that if Trump had been president when Hamas attacked Israel, then Trump just would have, quote, nuked Gaza. Has she told you how she's going to vote in November? I haven't. Rashida and I talk all the time. And I'm, I, these are very private conversations, and I want to be... Uh, she's angry. She's got a grandmother that lives there. She has family that's really been hurt. You need to understand that in my district, these people have had family members, mothers and fathers and grandparents and aunts and uncles. And Rashida and I are doing casework every day of trying to get families who are desperate to get their family members out. And even when you get all the paperwork and the visas and a place for them to come, you cannot get them out of Gaza. So I understand where she is right now. Uh, we each have to make our own decision. but. I understand how hurt and raw Rashida Tlaib is right now. And she represents a lot of people that she represents. We need to understand that. We've got to all put on our, our, our and understand that, you know, I keep saying to baby, everybody, a Jewish baby and a Palestinian baby's baby are both babies. They're children. And I want all of our children to live in peace. Amen to that. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, good to see you. Uh, as always, uh, Dana Bash. Uh, it is uh, a, a rough night for Democrats trying to figure out uh, how to make sure that what we're seeing in terms of this uncommitted vote mm -hmm. uh, doesn't vote third party or stay home or vote for Donald Trump in November. You know, as you were talking to Congresswoman Dingell, I was thinking about what the Biden administration could do more of. I mean, obviously, we have seen a big shift in rhetoric and policy, as we've been talking about, certainly since right after October 7th. Uh, we, ha we have seen in the past few weeks Biden administration officials, as she mentioned, go up and try to talk to people in the community. We haven't seen the president himself. And he's good in the room. <laughs> I mean, this is he knows how to talk to people. Uh, and he knows how to certainly express empathy for people's pain. And so my question is, how quickly after this, regardless of whether the numbers get much, much higher or not, is he going to go to Michigan and uh, not make the mistake, frankly, that the Clinton campaign did, which is not taking Michigan as seriously. Very different issues. David? I also thought the other thing that Congresswoman Dingell said that we should keep our mind, she said women are going to be a huge factor here. She said that a few times. I, yeah, and I think it's important for us to remember, Abortion rights was an enormous battle in Michigan. It was part of Governor Whitmer's huge reelection success, flipping the legislature to Democrats. We're not even talking about something like that in the context of this Democratic primary tonight with uncommitted. But I guarantee you that Governor Whitmer is going to make sure the issue of abortion rights is central to this Trump versus Biden campaign in this battleground. Although she can't make it a referendum because she already, she already did that. Did that. She yes, already did that for, for her own reelection. <laughs> That's a governor's prerogative.